My name's Chris. And I'm Christy. This is the Washing Up Podcast, and it's hybrid week. Yes, and now I am a Christy cyborg hybrid. Ah, in my imagination. I'm worried about you being a, a cyborg hybrid. Why? Well, you know, if computer hackers get in, you might suddenly become foul mouthed and and have all these oh, really sort of fucking filthy, terrible. filthy oh. ideas and say felching a lot. Like I know. The, I, I want the pure Christy that we've all come to know and love. Mm. Um, that's the one I want. I'm a nun. Um, now, obviously, this episode is not going to be naughty under nothing. Thank you for that. Um, I presume. Let's go with that. Um, so this episode obviously is not going to mm. be it's not going to be endorsed by Scott Morrison because uh, it's hybrids. <laughs> um, and clearly, this episode was far too left leaning for everyone's liking. Um, Look, we're trying to get Prius to sponsor us, but we weren't. Ran out of charge. We ran um, out of charge. Um, ran out of charge halfway through. Yeah, just our, our and we couldn't afford the Tesla version. It was no. great, fantastic. <laughs> What a what a what a, a moment! But couldn't afford it. Okay, okay. I saw the the highest nerdiest thing I've seen today, like to date. Okay, I was driving down in my new area for work, and near a, a university down there, and up drives this shiny new red Tesla with the number plate SCN. TST on it. Oh no! And there's this really nerdy dude who looks just so happy. Driving around, I'm like, I thought scientists work didn't get paid, but whoa, bro. I thought you were going to say suddenly there was a flash and there was a silver DeLorean with a number plate, license plate, out of time. No, 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 there's a, but there was a, like a white key or something parked at my other work that had um, uh, MPH, 80, no, 88 MPH. <laughs> it was pretty cool. That was actually the maximum speed that car could do. Yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> So it was hybrid week, um, yes. which is interesting because as we'll get to later on, um, Mel Buttle became, became a hybrid of both hosts. Yes. It was almost like she was just living the gimmick. She would just gone in a, like, um, what's it called? Um, like, you know, when this meld, like it just like Terminator 2, just kind of like. Well, Claire did talk about the mad scientist about merging Matt and Maggie together. Obviously her rope technique worked. Well, obviously it worked on them. Like yeah. she sort of went, why don't we just, you know, why don't we just combine the, you know, us? What is that word, though? I'm trying to think of it. I don't know. This could be great. It'll come to me at we're gonna keep, We're going to keep I'll, moving. I'll just release a separate podcast called What Was That Word? <laughs> Actually, that's a really cool idea. Christy's going to release a 10-second a podcast called What Was That Word? And literally, you should just download that without listening to this. <laughs> and just randomly, you get a word. So you, so you get you get a word, and you you get um, cross pollination. Um, and you <laughs> no, that's not grafting. the word. You get no. grafting. No, um, and just whatever the word happens to be, that's yeah. what you get. So anyway, let's move on while Christy mm. brings the podcast up a screeching halt, thinking about words. Um, I say. You remember that word. Anyway, so it was hybrid week, which is an interesting week. Um, mm. As a concept, it's a very intriguing concept. Now, mm. I can only assume in the first challenge. Now, we've had a bit of a robust debate about the first challenge. Um, Why are we jumping to the first challenge where we haven't mentioned Claire's voice? Well, oh. we're going to get there once okay. we get to the. I was going to get there once we get to the introductions. Okay, so, so I'll, I'll let you steer. So the shoe, the shoe nut. Now, first of all, who the <laughs> fuck has ever heard? Of a shoe nut. Does it Secondly, matter? Secondly, we're always saying we want new bakes on the show. This is a new. I bake. mean, there's there's been somebody on Twitter who has been, and I'm not even going to bother naming them, who has been frequently complaining about the lazy nature because a lot of these things have been on British Bake Off. British Bake Off has been running for ten fucking years. Yep. Of course, some of these bakes have been on British Bake Off. Get over yourself. You know what they haven't had? A shoe nut. You know why? Because it's a fucking invention. It doesn't exist. Now I'm glad it does. And if the, it was birthed on Great Australian Bake Off, I'm happy for that. Now the for, now the cro, now the cronut is more natural. However, oh however, my god. However, I disagree. However, mm. before we get into you just laying into me, yes, right. I understand why they didn't do the cronut. Because they did the coffin. Because they couldn't do croissants twice. But having said that, yeah, the shoe nut mm-hmm. is possibly the most awkward thing I've ever heard said around the shed. It look the nobody name sounds is, natural. No, no, no. The name for it is it should could have could have been called a a John Profferol or like a a, a prof nut. <laughs> it's getting better. <laughs> 
profita nut. A profita nut. A profita nut. It sounds like what you hold a crock and bush together with. Yes. You use profita nuts. And profita washers. <laughs> Just tighten, tighten them. Have you tightened your profita, profita nut? <laughs> no, you haven't tightened your profita nut? Yeah. No. But look, it's a little bit better. It's a little bit better than, than shoe nut. My biggest complaint was that shoe nut just sounds so bad. And it, nobody sounded natural or remotely like it was a thing. It just sounded like everyone was gathered together in a huddle beforehand and went, all right, everybody, this is a thing. Yes. <laughs> okay? We're all going to act perfectly normal. And poor Don is just forgetting all the time and going, cronut, I mean, shoe nut, cronut, shoe nut, there is, shoe nut. <laughs> there is space in this world for both, but some things are just better with different names. Like some things just, it doesn't suit, like the, I like, the whole, uh, the whole bake itself, I reckon it'd be fucking delicious. Just, that's just me because I'm a bandit for shoe pastry. But perhaps we should have put it to a marketing team. So I think a profita nut. I think it was. I, I my biggest my other big problem with it is it looks very doughy, like really doughy. How can it? No, no, no. But let me let me let me explain what I mean by mm. that. Okay, so okay, so the cronut is very one of the benefits of a cronut is it's yeah. quite light. Okay, it's quite light because the what layers... What have you been No, 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 eating? I'm not talking about when they get the dense chocolate at the top. I'm talking about in comparison to a donut. A cronut is lighter because it's the flaky layers. Mm-hmm. And so it is flakier and it is... The, the, the profiterole by nature yeah. is a really dense sort of outside shell. Yes, it's hollow in the middle, but it's a dense shell on the outside. Does it matter? Can't there be room in this world for both cronut and shoe nut? Well, why must you make us choose between two delicious baked goods? Funny you why should you, say that. Why funny, are you pitting them together? Funny you should Christopher say that. Christopher Buchanan, don't funny, do this. Funny you should say that because I put There's it to a There's enough division in this world. There's I put enough it to a climate poll. climate deniers screwing up the world and you want to bring it into the bake-off tent. So I put, it to, I put it to the world. I put out only one can survive. Which is better? No! The shoe nut or the cronut? nut? <laughs> You want to a guess zero what sum game. You want to guess what won the zero sum game? This is not a zero sum. Oh, no, invalid. <laughs> Tell your answer, but it's invalid. The cronut. The cronut won the poll. Don't care. <laughs> you don't you... care about numbers and statistics. No, I don't. Because... So what you're telling me is you're Trump. <laughs> Fuck you. That is like jumping the shark right there, Buchanan. <laughs> Here I am trying to unite the Bake Off world, and you are just trying to set shit, just just set people against each other. You like, you're, you're like, like the Trump. You're the one going, oh, they're going to come over here and take our jobs. You're and either with shoe nuts. You're How are the cronuts like us going to survive when those shoe nuts are coming here and taking our jobs? Because yes, Mister Cronut, you as a surgeon there are going to have your job taken by gone. Gonzo, the <laughs> Gonzo. the shoe nut. Gonzo the shoe nut. Um, Gonzo, Gonzo the shoe nut. Look, I just, I'm very impassioned. Okay. Apparently so. Anyway, moving on because we might actually get into the episode a little bit. Um, so as we said before, mm. we had Claire Hooper not. Sounding now, I kind of thought she put all of her energy and effort into the opening bit, and then when they got <laughs> into the shed, like she was drained, and you could just see like she's when she was talking, yeah. and it was very smoky and it was very raspy, yeah. And it did prompt, and I we had this conversation, and I said, mm. It sounds a little bit like a Carrie Bickmore, it's like Carrie Bickmore is Claire Hooper with a cold, yes, 100%. Yeah. Um, like I was waiting, I was waiting for her to suddenly throw to Waleed and or, or you know bring out beanies for brain cancer. Yeah. So kind of one of those sorts of things. So or, or look at my logie. Or a logie. I was about to say, <laughs> look at my logie. Um, so my other complaint is that shoe nuts, or when I sort of it got very close to show nuts, which sounded too much like an instruction. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when, apart no, from Sunny, no, 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 there's no, no, no. there's male bakers all over the place. And, and Angela. Yeah, yeah, Angela, yes. But, but, the, but besides those two, the other three boys, show nuts could possibly have led to some really awkward moments. Just like my year three, one of my teachers in year I'm worried three. about where this story is going anyway. So we had to do, you know, when you're like in year three or four or whatever, is you have to go and do compulsory swimming and whatever. So... I'm not going to mention his name, but this delightful teacher had 
these very short, short swimwears that were also very loose and obviously didn't have like the mesh carriage part that I presume most men's swimming shorts have. And if he sat on the edge of the pool at a certain angle, well, hello, good morning. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. It was um, only as bad as the woman who, because she didn't have big breasts, apparently didn't, apparently didn't need to wear a bra. Good on her. Not complaining about that. You know, you don't have to choose <coughs> underwear. But when you're teaching year six children and you have, remember the old... Like 1990, you had those kind of like 1940s style dresses with like a big kind of, they're like floral and they had like a big neckline. Whenever she bent over, well, there was nothing between our eyes and her boobs. So I went to the float, like when they sing, we're all going to nude school. Apparently I was. So yeah, Mel went up to Dawn. Um, and he's like, so how are you going to cook these? Are you going to you, you fry them? And Don was like, no, Mel, no, you can't fry a shoe, Mel. At which point Mel goes, well, they said you couldn't you fry, fry a Mars bar, but here we are. Um, and obviously, obviously, you know, Mel's advice never reached, you know, Scotland ship shops. I now believe Annette is at home just going, I see you and I raise you, Don. Here and getting some perfriterols and just battering them up. <laughs> just throwing. <laughs> Couple of eclairs. She's throwing everything into the fryer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did, I mean, I did have it suggested at one point tonight. We were talking, mm-hmm. I was talking to a couple of people, and it was suggested that basically, if you think about the shoe nut, um, it's, it's like a long eclair, a round eclair, really. It is. Well, it's basically a round eclair. Yeah, but all shoe pastry is that. All shoe pastry is shoe pastry with something shoved inside of it. It's a stuffed shoe, just in different shapes. It's Why like, didn't they make them make shoes out of shoe? Oh my god! Edible fashion. Edible fashion. Make it edible shoe fashion out week. Of shoe. Edible fashion week. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the opening bits to the episode for Edible Fashion Week? Oh my <laughs> god! Um, fashion turn to the left. left bite. Right. Fashion turn, turn to, to the right. right bite. <laughs> ah, ah, ah! Stuff a cream puff in the face. Fashion. It's Edible Fashion Week. Um, so Angela was making one with, which was berries and cream. So mm-hmm. that was that was Angela's flavour take. Um, Dan yep. was doing passion fruit and vanilla patissiere. I think that was a good call. It was a double hybrid because on one hand you had the you had the show nut. Yeah. And on the other hand, show nut. And on the other hand, you had the mixture of passion fruit and vanilla patissiere. Um, and Matt was really in because you're doing a double hybrid almost. Mm-hmm. No, and I mean for the scientist, you know, double helix, double 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 hybrid. I mean, you know, that's a quadruple hybrid. I'm shit at maths. I don't know. More importantly, Matt Moran tonight grabbed Dan's arm and felt his muscles while he was whisking. Is that a little? Up I think late? Matt's jealous. Just jealousy. Okay. I mean, it might it might be a bit bake off up late. Maybe he's missing being at the farm, you know, testing the lamb to see if they're ready for killing. I mean, Fremantle might be missing a trick there, not, not doing Bake Off up late. I mean, it's a <laughs> potential option. Hot right? dogs, I'm sure, is free. Hot dogs is free to host. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, of course hot dogs is free to host. He hasn't done anything <laughs> else in years. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, a large part of our audience is going, who the fuck, fuck is, is hot, hot dogs? dogs? And the rest of us who remember go, oh, shit, I haven't heard that for a while. <laughs> is he still a thing? No, he's not. I've um, got connections to Mike Goldman. We could probably get him to do. Yeah, I Mike Goldman was the first celebrity I ever followed on Twitter who messaged me back and it was before I understood that, that people can have like bots reply to everyone who follows them oh. um, and it was a really awkward can't wait to see your in capital letters and in inverted commas tweets as the time <laughs> goes on thanks for interacting with me and I'm like you clearly didn't send that <laughs> I my first celebrity tweet and it's really fucking awesome was a reply from Carrie Fisher yeah, yeah, you. Wee. I mean, my my first actual reply from a celebrity was Stephen Fry, but oh, lost you, sure. Because when you go back to that Twitter page as well, where they talk about who your Twitter father is or your Twitter mother, yeah, your Twitter parents, Stephen Fry is my Twitter father. Oh, what does that mean? It's like the first person you followed and the person that sort oh. of you interacted with the first time. Stephen Fry. So Stephen Fry is my Twitter oh, father. I have no idea. Can you find it out? Like, we'll look at just... it later. So, okay. So your your first one though was Carrie Fisher. So that was. That's yeah, first reply. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I said, oh, my God, when our BFF's being joking and because of her obvious, you know, history of having stalkers and stuff, she deleted the tweet. Oh, that's not going well. I know. 
And I didn't know to take a screenshot because early days. Anyway, back at the ranch. Anyway, back, back, at, the t- back at the ship. Oh, look at you. You're actually coming back to the episode with me. Yeah. Oh, great. I'm ready. Um, so Sunny Let's was... talk about shoes. So Sunny was going with passion fruit and chocolate, mm-hmm. um, which I really loved later on too when, when they came to the bench and they were, Sunny was like, yeah, he's using passion fruit, but is he using chocolate? And they went... Yeah, yep. actually, he is. <laughs> well, she's is like, he using shoe pastry? Um, yeah, we're all yeah, using shoe pastry. Yeah. And she's like, well, um, we'll is see he who's... baking in the shed? But then she went, oh, we'll see who's better at passion fruit. Like, not worrying about the chocolate. Just, yeah, She yeah. picked one element and she picked passion fruit. Um, well, would you? Well, yeah. Um, but what Sunny did with her passion fruit was interesting. Mm. She goes, I'm using fresh, mm. but I'm worried about making it too wet. So I've decided to use freeze-dried and the idea behind using freeze dried is that it'll make the flavour um, a bit stronger. Yeah. So that was a really cool idea, and I thought that was a re- it was really good, and it demonstrates her understanding of flavour, um, which yeah. is which I think is really good. So then we had Angela, and Angela um, was talking about you know the fact that she had to start got to start piping, um, <laughs> which is always a call you want to hear because like it was interesting because some of them were talking about using like the the donut sort of pans, mm. and some of them were talking about piping, and Angela was talking about the fact that she had to get into that piping right now, and like it was. Look- it was fun to watch them all pipe the circles, actually. Yeah, but when Angela said that, I was just disappointed that you just didn't hear this. It needed more McCartney. It just needed or more Farnham. pipe band. Or yeah. Farnham. We are just a bit of your, bit of your voice to go. A bit of your other voice would have been great. You know, yeah. you've got to start piping. And Angela goes, no. Yeah. Not what I meant. Um, so you take the high road. It's, it's she's like Annette just out there, <laughs> Roman in the gloaming. Anyway, um, so at this point, Sunny was also doing praline. So Don randomly decided to do praline, which was fun. To, oh, it, there's something about watching people work praline, mm. um, and then later on, they watch. We watched Don work the nougatine. So Don made the praline in this bit, and that was fun. And then he made nougatine, and watching him work nougatine was an absolute joy to behold later on. Oh, it was just a... Just all the teens. He, nougatine, praline, He should just teens. Do, do some, like, YouTube on that. You know, I'm sure it will come under an ASMR so or something. everyone started doing praline then, because David then made an apple and hazelnut mm. um, sh- uh, show nut with cinnamon glaze and hazelnut praline. So the crunch factor was what they were looking for. Yeah, which is pretty cool because, like, you know when you get a cinnamon donut, you've got that, like, sugary kind of crunch on it? Yep. I reckon that was kind of, like, the way now, to, to achieve it. Now, listen up, Christy. Yeah. Because here's a story. All about how About a little right. guy oh. who lives in a blue world. <laughs> and all day and all night, everything he sees is just blue, like him, inside and outside, blew his shoe nut... <laughs> With a blue little window and a blue Corvette and everything was blue for him and himself and everybody around because he ain't got nobody to bake. You know why? Why? Don's blue. I never thought I'd get a chance to make that reference. I never thought I would. And here now, we are. Now, what was fascinating about this was... He made a Smurf hole. We did. We'll get to the Smurf <laughs> hole in a moment. But what was fascinating about this was... So Don made... It was just called blue. Mm. Um, and there was marshmallow creme pat. There was freeze dried blueberry and another song. Donda is going to be full of songs tonight. Mm. You know why? Why? Because when I saw the colours, I yeah. just froze every time he saw through me because it was all over him. Mm. Electric, Electric blue. blue. Oh, um, show not. Show not. Show not. Bacon slowly tell me what can, can I, I do? Electric blue. It was. It was something else. And then we had them going, so is the, 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 the glaze there, is that blueberry? And he's like, no, it's just blue coloured. Yeah. You know when you buy Zuper Dupers and there's just a colour, I mean a flavour called blue. blue. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's just a colour called blue and, and a flavour called blue. Um, and Sorry, our cat Polly has decided she's just going to come up. She's going to contribute to the microphone and purr. She's if a you're very hearing, big fan of blue. If you're, you know, in, in, you know, you know what's interesting about that though? What? The purring sounds a lot like a car engine, which is appropriate for what we're talking about, Don. So <laughs> it's always like Polly is adding in the sound effects for you, Don. Well yeah, done. She's a big um, fan. Big fan of Don. Now Maggie asked Don how big mm. his marshmallows were. Mm, that's a bit personal, there, Max. Oh, Don's mm-hmm. apron. Oh. And I ask you, is he very good? Yes, yes he, he is. is. And apparently his marshmallows are rather big. Um, 
But That's maybe too sweet. sweet. Apparently. Oh, marshmallow mellow is too big and too <laughs> sweet. <laughs> what a fast neck do it? Anyway. Um, so then we talked about Don's, Don's Smurf Hole. So the first challenge, um, before we do that, I want to quickly mention the drinking game. Mm. Um, well, I feel like I need to go into the drinking game a bit um, and explain. Unusual combination. That was said in the showstopper. That came up in the show. Yeah, with the light cheer. So, therefore, yes. Drink. Baker uses chili. Didn't happen this week. I think last week after they blew Maggie's head off, there was a a mission. Um, Well, if anyone was watching SBS before um, Baker tonight. Oh, that was weird. There was a guy who made a chocolate, because it was a show about chocolates. Of course, I had to watch it. Um, There was a guy who made a three-course Indian meal um, in chocolate. That like, was fine. Yeah. It was his other creation, which was baked beans. Oh, baked bean, like truffle. Ooh. Baked bean truffles. No, um, mm. is the answer to that. Um, the bakers helping each other. That's a big tick. Yeah. Um, and that's Both. something, that's the last thing I want to mention before we get to the judging, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, sorry. Matt, no, that wasn't you. That was me. I brought oh, that okay. up. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, I don't know what you're apologising for. I brought Screwing it up. your own sizzle um, there. Matt says, I can't find fault with this, and then finds a few faults. He kind of did that a few times tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, Baker has a gelatin disaster. They did use gelatin. No, no disasters, disasters. Which is a fucking miracle. What um, the fuck? Well, this, isn't ma- this ain't Master Chef. Baker ignores advice from the judges. That didn't happen. Matcha didn't happen. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Baker has never heard of a bake. I don't think anyone had ever heard of a shoe shoe nut. (laughs) Um, You could have just drunk there. (laughs) Booze in a bake. Well, we got to the very last bake before it happened. Oh, thank God. But Sam Booker came out. Um, So let's talk about the bakers helping each other because we've seen bits and pieces of it all the way through the series. Mm -hmm. But, like, we had a lot of it tonight in this challenge in particular, and it was quite cool to watch. Yeah. Um, The way that everyone sort of contributed and everyone got in there and, like, it was, what can I do? How can I I do this for you? Yeah. It's really nice to see. You know, it's always one of the things that we say separates Bake Off from a lot of other shows. There was Dan, you know, needing to sprinkle stuff on his shoe nuts and, um... Ange and it was a uh, was a David helping him. Yeah, they were, and then Don ran over as well. With there oh, were Don others helping out with you know they were all helping out with each other. It was great. Um, so the judgment, mm. uh, David. They said it was a bit inconsistent, but when they said a bit inconsistent, it was one. So they took the one away, and Maggie went. That looks great. Um, they said his shoe pastry was really nice and very well filled. Mm-hmm. Um, Maggie loved that he left the apples in Chunky. chunk. Um, because it said it added that flavour and added a bit of texture. Made it a little less like baby food. Yes. Um, and they said that the praline was excellent. And they said the, the, the praline on the top of that crunch is the real star. Yeah. Um, Angela's, unfortunately, the the actual bake itself was a bit soft. Mm. Um, the icing on top wasn't, ev- wasn't, wasn't even. There also wasn't a lot of filling inside them. Um, yeah. And Matt was like, that's beautiful, but there's nothing there. Um, they said the flavour itself, itself was lovely, but it just needed something there. Mm. Um, Dan. Um, Dan's were also a little bit soft. Um, <laughs> that's what she said. Um, His ring was a little soft. <laughs> the icing colour was really nice for Maggie. Mm. Um, the flavour was really delightful, but the pastry, unfortunately, let Dan down. Um, yeah. Now, Sonny's looked good, but they were not identical in any way, shape, or form. Mm. Um, they said the shoe pastry was very inconsistent. Um the flavour was perfect. The curd was a little bit soft as well, they said. Yeah. Um, but the crunch was quite nice. Yeah. Um, and Don's colour was amazing. The shoe was well filled. Unfortunately, after asking the question of, about, about his marshmallow, the answer was there was too much of it. Yeah. Um, Maggie was only getting the marshmallow flavour. And, and Matt responded with, you know, it's hybrid week. If you take Dan's bake and your bake, Don, it's perfect. Now, Don looked up for merging. Dan, not so much. Yeah, Don, Don <laughs> seemed like he was quite happy with the concept of merging there, and Dan really... Dan, like, looked and, Well, I presume it, that wasn't the exact response that he gave, that no. facial expression, but that's the one the editors chose to put up. That's and, the one they went with. <laughs> um, so we then move on to the technical. Mm. Um, and it was set by the man who, of course, apparently is half man, half sports car. <laughs> Matt Moran. Um, which half do you think is sports car? Oh, uh, I think it's the bottom half. Oh, no, it'd be the top half because of his head. He's got the chrome dome. He's <laughs> aerodynamic. <laughs> um, so his advice was spread evenly and be scared of And they're pears. not vests. They're seat covers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you think in, in He's got an car, air freshener hanging off his forehead. <laughs> Do you think... Matt Moran's car, or better than that, than hanging off somewhere else. 
um, instead of like his seat covers look like vests, like <laughs> he's got the vest seat instead covers. Instead of like a like a, a car seat, like a, oh, a belt. God, a just car, think about it. If he a got seat a, belt, he has like vests that he straps himself into. If he got on MasterChef, they wouldn't have had the vest, but they would have had a vesta. Um, <laughs> So anyway, um, spread evenly, be scared of tears and wrinkles. Um, mm. That's his general life advice as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, you don't want that. They're even. working in the TV industry, be scared of tears, tears and, wrinkles. and wrinkles. Anyway. Um, <laughs> She's looking a little tired. Yes, yeah, she did turn 26 yesterday. Well, well, time to let her go. Again, I just keep on thinking of a Simpsons joke where the MTV host hosts at spring break. Mm. And as is my 22nd birthday, beep, beep, beep. Oh, no. Oh, no. And they just pull her out <laughs> and you go, hey, I'm Candy with all the hits coming at you. <laughs> um, Welcome to Triple J. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Triple J. So. I've just turned 29. I'll be seeing you on 702 I'll in the seeing, morning. I'll, 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 be doing a, I'll be doing a Robbie Buck <laughs> yeah. and I'll be swapping over to breakfast on, on 702. <laughs> 702. Um, and except for the station manager who's in his mid-50s. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> hashtag fuck Kingsmill. Anyway, Cruffin. <laughs> Doesn't that mean one to go on a Kingsmill rant? So yeah. the Cruffin. The Cruffin. The Croissant and the Muffin. I was there for it. I'm it not going to lie. Fucking amazing. I'm not going to lie. While obviously I've had my rant about the first challenge, mm. I'm down for a cruffin. You know what I liked about this? It was like a cruffin. No, it was like a more on the go, easy to eat um, ham and cheese croissant because it's it's essentially a fancy ham and cheese croissant because it's prosciutto and gorgonzola or however Matt pronounced it. Prosciutto. Sorry, I got Milo. Ker- I got Milo Kerrigan for a second there. Anyway, prosciutto and gorgonzola. Um, now, Matt didn't tell them how much, um, which is which is fun. Um, now, as we've discovered, trying to make an all meat lasagna using prosciutto to layer, it's tricky. It's um, so it's salty. all right. So so I did once try for our our esteemed Metapalooza gatherings. Yes. Um, I did once try to make a lasagna that was all meat, and my idea was to use prosciutto in place of the lasagna sheets. Yeah. Now there were a couple of issues. Uh, one of them is that the prosciutto shrinks. Um, yeah. When you cook it, so as a result, you'd need to really like overlayer the prosciutto. And secondly, and far more importantly, as Christy just indicated there. Salt. See, I think we should just do a mixed meat layer. Like, like you just go to oh, the Oh, no, deli. I do pepperoni this time. Oh. I do pepperoni or I do a salami, oh. and I get a long slice salami. Because we can do that with our, our meat slicer. Yes, we can. Oh, my. Why don't I just slice? Oh, my God. Revolutionary. But, but the first attempt was prosciutto because of yeah. the layers and because of the strips, and I thought that might be really good. It's Italian. It was so salty. I couldn't do it. It was so salty. I RuPaul loved it. wanted it. Yeah, RuPaul wanted it. Yeah, but it was mirror, mirror on the wall. Look, Who's the saltiest of them all? And, and usually, I'm, RuPaul's face comes up, but this time the lasagna. lasagna. <laughs> but the problem was that, like, I was trying desperately to go. No, 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 it's okay. And in the end, I'm like, no, no, I'm eating around it, and like the mince <laughs> had been contaminated by the amount of salt, salt in the prosciutto. Yeah. And I'm like, no. It was assaulted. Assault. Assault. The bechamel was nice, and I made the bechamel from scratch. Anyway. um... <clears throat> Then we got the aerobics workout. Yes, you did. So we had Sunny doing step aerobics, but apparently mm. Dan's is more a bit full body, and she said Zumbo. Um, Zumba, but it's Zumbo because, you know, like I wanted to make a reference here because oh. I did want to say to people, well, we want you to watch Great Australian Bake Off more than any other show. If you are thinking of watching Zumbo, please support, you Monica. know. Please support Monica. But and also, Moorish Cakes. <clears throat> I mean, always support Moorish Cakes, you know. Mm. You know always, support, always support Moorish Cakes. I but also, also, Jeff from the Great Kiwi Bake Off, who is also on the show. Oh, that's right. Remember, we have two Bake Off people for the price of one. Just showing again the importance and skill of the Great Australian Bake Off in that when Zumbo's trying to relaunch and make himself successful in Australia, yep. he needed Bake Off contestants to do it. Absolutely. So that's a very important point to remember. Mm. But meanwhile, the step aerobics versus the Zumba. Um, yeah. Look, I was here for Sunny's Oz style. Yeah, it was all aerobics Oz style. Yeah. All right, and I was really disappointed that we didn't get maybe Buttle in the background. Yeah. Doing some step aerobics. You know, like, remember there was always that one with the overly platinum blonde hair? Oh, yep. Always up the front. Always up the front. She looked a little bit like 
a little bit like if you're if you know the sort of hippie-ish sort of Muppet. Yes, yeah, Janice. She looked exactly like Janice. Yes. Like Janice in a leotard mm-hmm. doing step aerobics. And look, who didn't wake up to the dulcet tones of aerobics or style? Look, there was one. I never did it, but I would wake up to the dulcet tones of it going, what the fuck are they all doing? And more importantly, my question was always, what are the people walking around near this thinking? Like, they're all yeah. looking at all these people, like, because they, they go out of the studio to, like, they'd put all the steps out there near Sydney Harbour or they'd put them all near, like, you know, Flinders Street Station. Imagine being a commuter walking past a shoot for aerobics Oz style. Well, as I was about to say, is that <coughs> when we were growing up, we were living in Ultimo in Miscellaneous City and they were down in Darling Harbour in Miscellaneous City and it was live. I wanted to go down there, but no, apparently I had to go to school. So I would have thought that fuck aerobics, education. I would have thought aerobics also would have been all the education you'd ever need. And considering like the amount of times we'd have to walk down to Darling Harbour, like everyone's like, oh my god, you yeah, like we'd have to go to the, walk down to the House Museum or walk down to Darling Harbour. Everyone's like, ooh, look at you and your privilege and stuff. No, you don't understand. Like walking in Ultimo was horrendous because it's all traffic, so you can't go the short way to places. It's not like. And, and you're on edge all the time because for some reason, even though there's a clear, distinct footpath and a clear, distinct roadway because of the amount of traffic, for some reason, your parents and teachers think you are going to, like, fall onto the road that, and get hit by things. So you're always on edge walking around. And then to get into Darling Harbour, it was like a fucking maze. There were, like, walkways and, and overhead bridges and, like, just... And then suddenly you're in Darling Harbour. And then you could go running through the fountains and it was all worth it. So anyway, aerobics aerobics hostile. Um, Yes. Again, I wanted to see then, you know, and again, if Marcus was still in there, like if it was Marcus at season, Marcus would have been all over the aerobics hostile. Bit of nut bush um, action. Yeah, we could have had an entire shed. Just could have had a hybrid. Aerobics hostile and nut bush. (laughs) Aerobic shoe nut bush. You had to <laughs> add the shoehorn that in there. Had See what I did? Up. Yes, shoehorn right. that in. <laughs> so, then we got the first round approving. Um, mm. And then while they were in the first round, Dan and Angela were over there talking about the list of ingredients and they turned around and they went, do you see anything about the gorgonzola and the prosciutto? And they're like, no. no. And Dan and Angela gave each other a look like, oh, shit. Um, well. Then they broke out the gorgonzola. Mm. Um, and when they broke out the Gorgonzola, there were some interesting looks given. <coughs> I think it's fair to say not everyone was a fan. Um, I'm sunny, a fan of a blue sunny, cheese. You're not, not a, a fan. Sunny, not a fan of blue cheese. I'm a fan. Anne's of, not a fan. I'm a fan of a good blue cheese sauce. Yeah, but not blue cheese. I'm so. not a big fan of just eating blue cheese on its own, but I am a fan of a really nice blue cheese sauce. I can do a sauce, not a problem. Mm. Um, now... At this point, they all started trying to roll everything through the pasta maker. Um, so <laughs> poor, poor Don. Don's trying to roll it all through. And he's got a million things going on. And Claire's standing there and she goes, oh, my God, this is so hard. And as she says that, Don dropped the handle. Uh, <laughs> it happened because I don't click it. I don't understand. Like, I understand for the whole putting it away. But because I, <laughs> I... Used? I have acquired and adopted your beautiful pasta machine for my um, polymer claying. And what else have you done with that? Look, some polymer clay may have got stuck down the scraper side and I've got to get in there and try and undo that, but apparently that's a little bit impossible. If the fine people of Baccarat are listening to this, yeah. I could really do with a new pasta maker. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> or if the fine people of KitchenAid are listening, I could really do with the pasta maker attachment for the KitchenAid. Just saying. So just saying. But Happy to talk about you on the podcast forever. But we're just saying this, and what I'm just saying is that... Oh, I can't remember what I was just saying. Handles. Uh, handles. Off. I don't understand why there can't be like a little thing that just makes it click in so you can you can turn away without it being friggin' a big fucking deal. I mean, what was interesting for me about this, mm. Dan rolled his far further than Anybody ever could. He took his. I thought he needed a journey. A, I thought he was looking for a second bench. 
<laughs> at one point, I really thought he was looking for a second bench. Look, there's he was, enough room in the shed now <laughs> that you could wheel in a second bench. He was rolling it out and rolling it out and rolling it out and rolling it out, and it got longer. It started off like a snake. Mm. And he was talking about Angela, like, yeah, there's the head, there's the... T- it's, it's snake. And then by the time he came back again, like, everyone else has looked normal. And his is, like, looping around the bench. They've all got, say, Python. <coughs> his is an anaconda. <laughs> Mature adult. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Don decided that, well, if you've got prosciutto... Mm. And you've got Gorgonzola. Use it all. Fucking use it. So he just filled every part of it with that. And, and he said afterwards he couldn't understand why you wouldn't use it all. Here's a pro tip, John. Picky. Just just for, for afters, you know, while you're waiting for it to bake. Well, my follow, there, my follow up on pick that. Pick at it. My follow up on that is mm. Don was right. Why? Like, they said there was too much Gorgonzola and too much prosciutto. Yeah. Lies. Damn lies. Bullshit. Your lasagna proves there can be too much prosciutto. Yeah, but that's when prosciutto's not balanced with something. The Gorgonzola but it, balances but the But Gorgonzola was also salty. Doesn't matter. I think it's wrong. Anyway. I agree with Matt Moran, famous chef. <laughs> and, and a setter of this task. Of course you do. Um... <laughs> Of course, you, of course you agree with Matt Moran. Oh my God, we're getting into a battle of the sex. I really feel like... You remember in the How is this a battle of the sexes? No, no, okay. It's not a battle of the sexes. What I'm talking about is do you remember back in the old days of the radio host and you'd always have the the male host who'd be like Listening to the wireless. Yeah. No, but this is like the early late nineties, early two thousands, they'd be like the male host who's like, Oh, and I woke up and had a bit of a a big poo in the toilet and then you'd have the female host go, Oh my god, that's so terrible. As a woman, I would never discuss Can that. Can you please stop describing what Kyle Sanderlands and Jackie O have been doing for years? Oh my god! Don't, I, I don't do not listen. I do not listen to the radio. I have especially never listened to them. But, <laughs> but mm. that's kind of their shtick. Really? Yeah, because Jackie gets offended as a woman. Kyle says a lot of insulting shit because he's a dick, and then Jackie gets insulted as a woman. And then the network apologises, and they threaten to put them on. They threaten to put them on suspension, and by suspension, what they mean is Kyle gets a three week holiday, which is what he wanted anyway. And then he comes back, and they go back to doing the whole speaking as a woman thing. Mm. It's a gimmick, and him, and him asking um, underage girls what their sex life's been. Anyway, like. moving on before we get into Kyle because he's a fuckhead. Anyway, maybe you should <laughs> maybe you should try himself on trial by Kyle. Anyway, um, <laughs> I fucking, guilty, guilty. Um, Sentenced so, to death. Now they rolled the first one, mm. um, and then like, they finished the first one, and then they're like, "So how?" And then Mel's like, "So how are you going to actually make this into something?" And they're like, "We well, cut this one in half, and then we make another one." She goes, "What?" She goes, "Yeah, I've got to make two more." She goes, "What?" Yeah. Like, and when I heard that, I'm like, <coughs> I was looking, I'm thinking, how are you going to get all of those? Like, you're going to have to like because David slice was talking about six and... David was talking about how you got to slice them, and I'm sitting there thinking, oh, same thing. I'm there going, that's not going to make all those. It's not going to do it. Mm. And then they're like, we've got to do it again. It's like, you got to do that again? You get more than one? What do you mean more? Than- that makes no sense. See, I feel this is where the cronut could be slightly more um, better than the cruffin. I think the cruffin is worth the energy, but I think if you're going to make it yourself, you just you just cronut it because for it's eating, be easier. For eating, it's a cruffin. Mm. For making, it's a cronut. Yeah, because the cronut, you just do your layers and then you just cut it out. Yeah, for, for eat, yeah eating as a cruffin, mm. making as a cronut. Um, that's an important distinction to have there. Um, if so, I'm not making it, cruffin it is. But the interesting part here was that they had, to work out, they had to work out the semi-knot. Yes. So they were explaining the semi knot, and they've got to do the twist, and it was great because Dan, before he did it, was there like with his hands, like miming all these different knots, <laughs> like he'd come out of the Boy Scouts, yeah. and he was like, like going, hmm, "Is it a clo- like a clove hitch? Is it more of a reef knot? Am I looking at a, 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 a like a slip knot? Like where? Like am I wearing a mask and just singing like freak on a yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, what, what's what slip knot song we're we doing? Don't really know. <laughs> Nothing like that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> What was fascinating with this, though, was mm. then we got to watch... First of all, there was the waiting, um, yeah. and it's always fun when they have to play the waiting game. Um, it sucks. There was tea, and you took that off the... I did. The week that I take the drinking of coffee or tea off, and there were lots Don't of references. 
Don went for a tea, and then later on, um, Mel did make a reference to making a, a coffee tea hybrid. And I'm like, damn it, we could have got a lot of drinking in on you that one. You can call it toffee. Teefy. Key. Key would it be my, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we got to watch them rise. It's fun to watch. Could you call it cough tea? You could. I wouldn't, but you could. It's fun to watch mm-hmm. a cruff and rise. They're quite magical. Aren't they, they? they? They don't rise so much as bloom. They do bloom. The blooming of the I felt like I was watching an Edinburgh documentary. I felt like it was yeah. one of those Edinburgh documentaries where you've got, like, you know, the algae all yeah. comes to life and the, the, the coral all comes to life and the cruffins. <laughs> come up. When they have that, what's it called? Um, the... Um, Time lapse yes. photography. Yes, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of the Our World. Have you? Yes, and, ah. and it's, it's really well shot and very well done. Mm-hmm. And some, I think, one of the reviews of it was, oh, you know, but it's supposed to have this environmental message, but it's, it's kind of lost in it. And I'm like, it's fucking Attenborough. A, it's not lost, and B, just watch it. What is? Ha, okay, you. It's wa- supposed you're to have literally, that you are literally watching the environment. How is that not an environmental <coughs> message? Yeah, he's I, he's showing he's showing the environment suffering from man-made issues. Come on, it's easy. Is, is he actively out there polluting? Like, is that here's what happens when you pour crude oil on the Great Barrier Reef? <laughs> Attenborough goes nuts in his older years and just starts shooting foxes. He takes a couple of <laughs> bottles of White King out there to bleach some coral. <laughs> this is a rare snow leopard. This is a house brick. <laughs> He takes out some. He gets the nappy sand guy. Let me get rid of the colour. Let me let me dunk it in this tank. <laughs> white or whites, bright colours. <laughs> oh god! Oxy plus to get rid of all those stains. Um, he's a handy tip from Sandy from um Bellevue Hill, um, who would never do her own fucking cleaning if she's from Bellevue Hill. Oh, if I've got a heavy stain, I just whip it into a paste and pour it on. Apparently every fucking tip that you get from these people, because they're always like, you know, writing for handy tips. Not that I've done that, but they all seem to be just get some, <laughs> make it into a paste and whack that on. It's kind Heavy of like, concentration of the cleaning thing. Yeah. It's like, I've got rheumatoid arthritis. Have you got a tip for that? Yep, just whip a bit of paste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nappy sand into a nappy, paste. Nappy whack sand. it onto the joints. Yeah. What's that, a cut? Just whip some nappy sand paste up. <laughs> got in no time. Um, so the Climate j- change, <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> Coat the barrier reef in nappy sand paste, it'll be fine. You just see the housewives of the eastern suburbs doing a convoy out to the drought stricken farmers to get off some paste. Water, sustainable plants, nappy sand. <laughs> now whip it into a paste. With what, Marjorie? There's no water. It's like, Tony, Tony Abbott, get off the, the, the front line fighting those fires. Here comes the mums with their tips and their nappy sand paste. I got it fixed. Um, so the judgment. I hear Trump's pulling them in to get him off with collusion (laughs) allegations. Okay, back at the shed. So the judgment. Yeah. Dan's inconsistent Mm. size-wise, good crunch, good layer, but unfortunately they were underproved. Angela's, Mm. they weren't pushed down in the mould enough, and they did sort of, that was brought up before they, because they said to Angela at one point, one of them, it was was Dan or David, one of them said. I think two people did. They went, that's a little bit high up. Like that, yours look higher up than Don said that to her, yeah. and, and Dan had before told her to just push them down a little bit. Push your little cuffins and make them come. So they were a bit doughy. There well, you go, second uh, Weezer. They were a, they were a wit, bit doughy on mm. the bottom. Yeah. Now the main reason they were a bit doughy on the bottom, I suggest, was they weren't touching the bottom of the pan. That would stop them from going crispy because they weren't actually touching the bottom because oh, they okay. weren't pushed down. So yeah. they didn't go all the way down. Um, and they were again mm. undercooked. Um. Don's were crispy but very heavy. And they went, these are really heavy. And they cut them open. Look, it's just got half a wheel of gorgonzola in it. But, and as Maggie said, yeah. she thought it was really heavy on the gorgonzola. Mm. But she also didn't say that was a bad thing. <laughs> She's like, it's actually nice. Maybe the facial expressions was what was she was trying to use to convey her... Holy shit, this is salty. But he then came last in it. So anyway. Yeah. Um, David's, they said it was much lighter. Well, obviously, it was compared to Don's. Um, Don's could have possibly been used as doorstops. So, um, I mean, essentially, the, both of them were like the the, um, the telephone handle prank in the yeah, office. In the office. <laughs> um, so David's were lighter with a beautiful flavour. Mm-hmm. Sunny's were uniform. They hadn't been proved enough. And the crust was the nicest one out of all of them to eat. Yeah. So Don was last, then Angela, Sonny, Dan, and David. Um, 
<clears throat> so that brings us up to the show stopper. Now, yes. they announced before the show stopper that Claire was sick and therefore wasn't going to be in. No. Now, and Maggie did so to say, look, Claire is such a trooper for even coming in at all. Like, Maggie was trying to justify the fact that she wasn't there by going, she's so brave but of she her. she still came in. No, you're not brave coming in to work sick, Claire. I'm sorry, but you're, you're the people we, we, we just detest at work because then you share your germs and we all get sick. I think she was brave. I really like that Claire Hooper. She's a very brave woman. I love Claire. Don't get me wrong. I think she is brave because if you came into my workplace sick, we would have all chased you out the door. Also in a couple of weeks. Look out for a special podcast. Not saying anything. <laughs> so, um, the showstopper. Yes. Was the biscuit cake. Which, if you're going to hybrid something, I think they're two things. Yeah, they're hybrid. <laughs> I, like the, I like the brilliant review you just gave that. If yeah. you're going to hybrid two things... They are two things. Yeah. You can hybrid, hybrid them. Because we've had the cake sandwich. Remember the sandwich cake in Canadian? I remember the sandwich cake. Brought us some lovely lovely lobster action from, uh, <laughs> from PER. Wow. Um, four and a half hours to make your biscuit cake. You did mm. have to have three layers. Um, yep. So, and as, as Mel said, well, it's unfortunate that Claire's not here, but it's more biscuit cake and screen time for me. <laughs> Which makes me think... Did Mel sabotage Claire? Because there was a bit of rivalry at the very beginning of the series, you know. Like, I wonder. I wonder if she dosed her. She's like, she's like, I just want to be the first Bake Off um, around the host. world to be a solo host. <laughs> but <laughs> what I really loved was that the judges decided to pitch in and help yeah. with the on your mark get set bake. And you can tell they've never had to do that before. No, it, it looked like it's kind of like, oh, this is not in my contract. <laughs> yeah, it's like, excuse me. Um, can I get some extra money? I don't say this. This is not me. Um, so Maggie went, I want at least another <laughs> trailer full of butter. So David was making, his one was called H is for Harper. And a pinball machine for my den of doom. So his was called H is for Harper. It was Aww. David's. And it was lovely. And he said, when my daughter watches this, she's going to look at this and go, H is for Harper. And she's going to be so excited. Aww. Now, Now, I have permission to share a story. So... David could obviously anticipate that his daughter would watch that and see the H and get very excited Mm -hmm. and go, you know, oh, H is for Harper. What David couldn't have anticipated, however, is that when listening to our delightful podcast, that we would randomly sing, Barnings Warehouse will make your cake grouse. And that would be the thing <laughs> that Harper latches onto. That Harper would latch onto. Would latch onto. Um, they were David, on holidays recently. Yeah, David related related back the other day. They were on holidays, and that came on while they were in the car. And apparently, that's all Harper could sing. So, hey Harper, um, <laughs> and and just just for you, Barnings Warehouse will we'll make your cake, cake grouse. So enjoy that, and apologies, David. Um, and Harper, because now you're going to be one of my new nieces. Um, and like my niece, I will always encourage you to insert words like bum. So like Burning's Warehouse will make your bum grass. Like it just it just makes it more funny. I, w- I want you to know, David, I have had nothing to do with this. Anyway, um, I liked his design too. Like I thought it was really pretty and we'll get back to that in a minute. But I thought his mm-hmm. design on that was really pretty. And then he just threw everything at it. <laughs> Dear God, like... <laughs> Look, so I'm he surprised had white... there wasn't bacon. So and I only got a little bit of it because I typed this as it goes. <laughs> and at one point, I actually typing out David's, I went easy on. Um, he went so full flora. White chocolate, pistachio buttercream, pistachio, and I think it was a coconut macaron. There was licorice. There was jelly. There was something else I've missed involving coconut. I can't remember what it was for the life of me. Um... I'm pretty sure Lord Lucan is hiding somewhere under a macaron. <laughs> Harold um, Holt's remains. Um, Malaysian <laughs> Airlines flight. No, that was in Dan's. Um, yeah. But um, the newest element found in the Hadron Collider. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump's morals. Anyway, and all the things that have been missing forever. Um, so <laughs> they were all in there, um, and we'll come back to, to that in a minute because licorice the and the jelly. Of the, destiny. The, the, the jelly in particular was woo fun. Um, Angela. Now, Angela was going her queen of hearts. I like it. I loved it a lot. Um, First of all, I was like, off, off, 
with head. And then by the end of it, I'm like, playing with the queen, queen of hearts. hearts. Oh, I should have done Just that Newton. karaoke the other day. Just Newton. <laughs> yeah. It's, you, know, you will be hard pressed, ladies and gentlemen, to find mm. a podcast this year, in 2019, that references Juice Newton. <laughs> and it, it really, it's <laughs> underrated. But um, so we had our um, Christmas party for work on Monday and we did karaoke because we suggested it at the end of last year and us extroverts got it for this year. So I was coming up with my my um, karaoke list and I was so happy because he had them all, including like, like usually when you go and you want to do Madonna or something, they've only got like the new version of American Pie and 40 Seconds, whatever it is. No, they had Like a Prayer. So I was happy. Really there. Because life is a mystery, you know. Like a Prayer is one of two songs that I get 100% on, on um, SingStar. Well, I got 100% Actually, no, sorry. It wasn't, it wasn't Like a Prayer. At karaoke. It wasn't Like a Prayer. It's um, Material Girl. Oh, Material Girl and Rio by Duran Duran. Yeah. See, my, my colleague's like, oh, I do like a version. I'm like, no, it's the wrong tone for my voice. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and plus... You know, I wouldn't remember what that's like. Because we are living in the material world, and I am a material girl. You are, Chris. I am indeed. So, anyway, um, vanilla biscuit with chocolate brownie and macaron. Again, this just felt, all of these, one, were amazing, but two, it literally felt like they decided to just throw everything they could possibly bake on the one thing. What we had blondies, we yeah. had brownies, we had macarons, we had jelly uh, there were little bits of marshmallow everywhere. Mm. It was incredible. What do you reckon the Baker's karaoke songs are? I mean, Sonny's is Sonny Comes Home, of course. Sonny, ca- Sonny Came Home has to or be. Or Sonny and Cher. Like, just... No, it has to be Sonny Came Home. Okay. okay. Um, she says, Bakes go by. She wonders why. She's, <laughs> she's baking in the shed. Um, I don't know. Um, Don, Shannon Knowles, jump in my. Co- no, no. No. No, that's a day. day no, 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 forget, forget even the David. Right you don't want the David Hasselhoff version. You want the Ted Mori gang, the original. Okay. You know, the, the original Ted Mori gang, which if you've ever seen the original clip, they're having a concert on a barge in Sydney Harbour. Real thing. Oh. Um, I think it was for 2SM. And while they're out there holding this concert, there are girls jumping off the foreshore and swimming to the barge. Oh. Um, it's hilarious to watch because they get there, and as they get there, security grabs them, so they've swum there for nothing. <laughs> um and Ted Mori and his long, luscious locks at the time. Grand, fantastic. Um, <laughs> All right. Just, you know, tweet us with who you yeah, think. Yeah, tweet, tweet us. What with, Baker and what their karaoke song yeah, is. Yeah, tweet us with the Baker and their karaoke song. We're really mm-hmm. interested to find out what you think they if are. If you are a Baker, tweet, tweet us with your karaoke, karaoke song. song. <laughs> um, so we got, at this point, while, she, while Angela's making brownies, Dan mm. was making blondies. Um <laughs> <laughs> and Sonny was braving gelatin, and gelatin came up a few times. And and, and no, I had on the game card tonight gelatin disaster. One of the things we've seen consistently in Bake Off, Australian and Canadian, gelatin disasters. Gelatin goes badly for yeah. some reason tonight. They got it right. It's like the gelatin just kind of went. You know what? Not I'm, off. I'm just, just gonna be. I'm gonna be fine. I'm cool with this. Um, I'm here. I'm here to be gelatin. Here to do what gelatin does. At that point, by the way, they cut to Don, who had a very large mixing bowl full of meringue. Oh, it looked luscious. Wow. The sheen on it. Oh, it looked incredible. Oh, you know, when you just picture what delicious meringue would look like, that's what I picture. Then they cut back to Don Mm. making his nougatine. And I tell you what, speaking of things that looked delicious, watching Don roll that nougatine, it just... That's what I mean. Oh. Like, you should just do a YouTube channel, like the ASMR channel. You've got to get the sound in, apparently, because it sends tingles up people's spines or whatever. I don't know. But it, it's one of those, or, you know, when you're watching the, the um, you know, this is satisfying. Yes. But oddly, I hate, oddly yeah, satisfying. Yeah. Oddly satisfying. But I hate the ones that they cut off just before, like, and you're like, you're, that's not oddly satisfying. That's very annoying. A large percentage of those oddly satisfying things, not even remotely satisfying. No. But there was one where the guy had the karcher and, like, the yeah. pressure, and he was, like, you know, um, cleaning this pavement. And it was really good because you're just seeing it go from, like, dark to light. And it got to about three quarters of the way, and then it jumped to another clip. And I'm like... Finish. That's not satisfying. Didn't finish. That's... that's Disappointing. Did they finish? Did so, he walk away feeling good? So Don turned around and pointed out at this point that Dan's not the only one with the big guns. They're a karcher uh, tease. <laughs> they were... Oh, yeah, anyway. 
Keep going, yes, okay. Yeah, Dan's not the only one with big guns. You no. stopped all over Don's line about Sorry, big guns. big guns, okay. Because he was talking about bringing out the big guns with the Nougat team. Mm. Um, so, at this point, we talked about, so Don was, okay, this is a surprise, I know, mm. but Don was making a French butter biscuit. Yes. I know, unusual. Um, with a champagne buttercream. Ooh. Again, so mm. good. Um, handmade chocolates. As you do. God, they look good. Mm. And the macarons that he made as well. Yeah. Um, now, Dan was making a lemon biscuit with a raspberry marshmallow, mm. macadamia blondies, <laughs> and meringue kisses. And his meringue kisses look so good. Save your meringue kisses for me. Or I could have gone gentlemen preferred blondies. <laughs> you could have. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, you didn't. Um, <laughs> Sunny went rose water cream cheese. And at that point, Matt and Maggie both went at the same time. <gasps> rose water cream, cream cheese. cheese. And she's like, just so she's like, a little bit, a little bit. It'll be subtle. It'll be subtle. I, I promise know, you. I know my rose water usage. But then she used rose and lychee jelly mm. and coconut marshmallow. Yeah. And again, sounded really cool. Um, Angela was pureeing raspberries at this point. She's scraping her raspberry puree out. Mm. And it. it it kind of looked like he was cleaning up a murder scene. <laughs> it did. It looked like Jasmine's cake, the murder cake. <laughs> oh, the murder cake from um, Canadian. <laughs> but so he's just dripping over. She's like, I'm just, no, that's a coconut <laughs> cake. <laughs> um, so um, Don was worried in his assembly about the semi crackage mm. going on. Um, Don't want any crackage in your see. Angela was a little bit worried about the weight, <laughs> so she was using supports. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And Dan was just being Dan and throwing more sparkle at it. He says, there's me throwing <laughs> colour and glitter. Um, yes, we haven't mentioned Dan's. So I <coughs> fucking loved it. I think that the level of colour and glitter was fabulous and I'm here for it. It was. And the, and the, the, the marshmallow tail that he had was really cool. Yeah. Um, it's, a sh- it's a shame the biscuit wasn't that good. Because... I was really happy with David's. Yes. I was really happy with David's because he made, first of all, he made licorice. Yeah. And I love licorice. Yeah, um, it's all yours. He also put Sambuca in there. <laughs> and got got the, the booze in a bake component through. I know great. I've had Sambuca because I went on a pub crawl and decided to have every colour of Sambuca at each plate. And you remember it? No. No, you, you wouldn't have. I just remember sitting out that night and because I don't remember the rest of the you night, know you had I Sambuca. know I did it. <laughs> yeah. Black Sambuca in particular. Um, now, again, the challenge itself, though, was really mm. straightforward. There wasn't a huge amount in it. Like, yep. they did all that, and then they put it all together, and then it was put together. They they looked amazing. All yep. of them looked absolutely amazing. It kind of um, was a little bit reminiscent of, um, oh, she's just one Canadian. I can see, N- Natalia's, um, uh, remember her uh, traditional cake that had the layers? Yes. Yeah, I uh, can't remember. No, but that was, that's kind of Because now I'm calling was. everything Kruntzakokkri. Kruntzakokkri. So, Kruntzakokkri. So, anyway, mm. um... Obviously, they these bakers didn't need it. No. But mm. if you were looking for a way to put together some really amazing cake decorations yeah. and some incredible sugar art, mm. well, there's really only one place to turn. Yeah. That would be Australian Sugar Craft Magazine. It would. If you're, if you're looking for a quality magazine focused on cake decorating, decorating and sugar art, Australian Sugar Craft is the magazine for you. It's a full-colour digital magazine with step-by-step tutorials, recipes, tips, and ideas. And you know who likes a good idea? Who? Everybody. Everybody likes a good idea. Fuck yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, they certainly do. Wow, I didn't know that. That's amazing. No. So the subscription is an annual cost of $19.90 Australian, and you receive two issues per year. Get on to it. Where do you can, can you get onto it, Chris? Don't don't worry, by the way, about your Disney Plus subscription. No. Just do this. Yeah. Go to facebook.com forward slash Australian Sugarcraft and you can get all your information there. Mm. So I, we highly recommend Australian Sugarcraft magazine. Yeah. Um, you can't really do better. Like, you can't. You just no. can't. Like, and if someone says they can, liar. Absolute liar. They are complete phonies and they should be just all smited from this earth. Just excommunicated from baking and everything, really. They just banned out. from baking. Yes. BFB. Banned <laughs> from baking. baking. So, yes, Australian Sugarcraft Magazine. It's a great place to go and learn these sorts of the tips and tricks. The power of Jesus compels The power of Satan. power of Jesus compels you. Baking Jesus. Um, baking so, Jesus. Baking Jesus. He's a hybrid of Jesus and baking. <laughs> just like shoe, shoe, shoe nuts. 
<laughs> He's bacious. Bacious. <laughs> oh, God. And um, lo, they came, and I baked loaves. Fuck the fishes. That's, that's where all the loaves. fishes came from. It was all loaves. loaves. <laughs> Baking Jesus, just <laughs> loaves for everybody. Um, <laughs> if you want fishes, go and find fish. Fishjus. <laughs> I'm Bigjus. <laughs> Bigjus. There's many, many, many faces. You've, you've heard of you've heard of the Holy Trinity? Well, this is the food trinity. <laughs> Bigjus, fishjus, and winejus. <laughs> winejus, yeah. Winejus was the most popular, by the way. Yeah. Um. So the judging, hmm. Don. They said Don's was absolutely beautiful, and it was. The chocolate was great on the outside, not mm. as good on the inside. Texture was a bit off. Yeah. The macarons are perfect. Um, the, bi- sh- the biscuit, Maggie actually pushed Matt before Matt got to have a taste. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was great because when they went over to taste his nougat tea, yeah. they were trying to like play it, st- play it yeah. straight face. But Maggie clearly rolled her eyes with delight. <laughs> <laughs> and Don later on went, she tried to hide it, but she <laughs> couldn't hide it. Um, so they said it was probably his best work. In the shed. I've got to agree, it was really good. You know what? It was nice to see nice Maggie back in the shed. I mean, I know evil Maggie is, is technically just, she's just slightly sassy Maggie, she's really. She's working. Um, just, yeah. So the rain got a bit harder when Angela's judging happened, which I thought was great because they had to yell. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> what's this, bank? It was the moment when I'm there, I'm going, what's that noise? It's like, oh, that's rain. We haven't heard that for a while. <laughs> um, it was like a cakey biscuit. Um mm-hmm. There was no snap, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, the buttercream was lovely. The meringue was perfect. And they said it was like a mini pavlova. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, unfortunately, the, the biscuit wasn't there. Um, David's, uh, Maggie wanted a checklist of everything that was in it. She's like, we just tick all these boxes of everything you've put in there. Um, <laughs> they said the white chocolate with the licorice was absolutely amazing. And mm. Matt said the biscuit was the best that he'd had so far. Mm. Um Dan, uh, they said it was colourful and alive, and Maggie referred to it as a flying Mardi Gras. <laughs> yep. And I can imagine that that's what it would be like. Um, and I imagine that's the kind of jesh that would be bringing in bakers to the to what we are hoping somehow be a float. to manifest for um, world pride in Australia when it comes to miscellaneous city. I mean, what, 2022, 24, something um, just a just a bake off and baking shoe float. Like, yeah, well, just... I mean, I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful we can get one up for um, Mardi Gras next year. Anyway, um... no, we can't do it. You don't understand how long it takes to get a float together for Mardi Gras. Like that would be the most insane bake off challenge. Like Dan to would bake literally, Dan would literally just throw glitter at it. <laughs> you don't think if we gave this man a bucket of glitter. And like a moving stage, yeah. he couldn't make it amazing. But but you have to understand, my love, like th- the gays and the lesbians and everyone else on the rainbow, right? Their their skill, their glitter skills are high. Like this is this is like the glitter Olympics. Dan's pro. He is pro, but it takes a team. They've got like pro teams out there. I don't. I love Dan, and I think he's got skills and glitter skills. But is he? Up for the challenge against going against like, like teens. Yes, hundred percent. Who have a team with him too? Matt also came alive with his marshmallow. So I mean, there's that option. Okay, Just bribe everyone with marshmallow. <laughs> like, hey, everyone, do a slightly worse job. I'll give you marshmallow. Um, but Matt bounced. Like he was like, the blondie was good. This goes. This is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. And he goes, that marshmallow. It was like suddenly he was reborn. <laughs> um, so everything around the biscuit was great. Mm-hmm. Was a biscuit challenge though, but um, Sunny, I said the lychee jelly melted. Um, Matt thought it was one of the nicest things he'd ever eaten. Yeah, that was literally the whole bit of feedback. Maggie's like, "This is unusual. I've never had this before. Never had this combination of flavors before." Ticking a box on the drinking game. And for me, the cross section kind of looked like an iced Volvo, so I was down for that. So Sunny won Star Baker. Yep. I, I personally thought that. David was Star Baker. But to be honest with you, Star Baker at this point, David said it in the episode himself. Mm. Star Baker doesn't matter. At this point of the series, it doesn't matter because it's about what you produce, you know, going forward. Yeah. So, like, he didn't get it. I would have given it to him because I didn't think he put a foot wrong. I thought he was easy, he was the best at the first. He, he, you know, won the technical and then he didn't make a mistake with his showstopper. Mm-hmm. Um, Sonny did an amazing showstopper, um, and I've sort of had it indicated. I've asked a few questions. 
Um, and the indication was that, yeah, the, the showstopper is very heavily weighted, especially when it's close. Yeah. Um, and they also, there are other t- things taken into account. I'll come back to that in a minute, though. So, Sunnyman Starbaker. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's the end of the road for Ange. Oh. It, like, it's been Kill Your Darlings all season, but this is hard. Ange, Ange has done an amazing job of she's, clinging on the last couple of weeks, too. Yeah, and she's wonderful to watch. You she's know? so much fun. Um, she, she made me, like like and appreciate vegan food. Um, you know, I, I did reach out for a few ideas on how to do certain parts of that challenge, and I did one of the people I did reach out to was Angela, and mm-hmm. I kind of credit a large part of that pie going well. Um, to Ange. To Ange for, like, going, no, definitely worth it. To Ange. Um, so she's been fantastic to watch, and I, I have absolutely zero doubt in my mind. We will have her on the podcast shortly. There are a bunch of people coming onto the podcast soon, and yeah. Angela will be one of those people. Yes. Definitely. We've got a long list. Dennis, just speaking, so many people. Speaking of that, mm. at this person's behest, mm-hmm. I am going to announce the night they're on. Um, so, on Tuesday, yes. we will have a special podcast. It's been years in the making, folks. I have been asking, I have been badgering, I have been harassing, the restra- restraining order has been lifted, <laughs> um, and we can proudly, mm. proudly announce, and if she pulls out of it now, I'll kill her. Nicole Rogers, the executive producer of The Great Australian Bake Off, will be on the podcast on Tuesday night. Woo! Um, it is going to be fantastic. We're going to get to ask her a bunch of stuff about how the show's put together, mm-hmm. about the way they do the challenges, about just a whole range of things connected to production. Like who decided on the weather vane, who, like, went for, like, the, um, I don't know. Why were people not shot when they produced Marcha? Um... <laughs> Why do you encourage much? Uh, um, why do you allow that powder into the shed in the first place? <laughs> Look, a range of questions. But if you have a question that you would like to ask to ask Nicole, what we would like you to do is you can tweet to us mm-hmm. or include the hashtag Ask Nick A S K N I C. And if you include that, there's only one other. Well, I've checked this hashtag up. There is one other for a Labor candidate in the UK yep. talking about coal mining. So we could be asking about coal mining. We could be asking about baking. Who knows? Yeah, because we'll if be... your questions don't come in, then Nicole's going to be answering questions about coal mining. It'll be fantastic for her. I'm sure she knows a lot about it. Yep. But so hashtag ask Nick. Let us know your questions. We we will you know, go through them and we'll pick a couple of those out to ask Nicole as well. But, yes, we will have Nicole on the podcast on Tuesday night. Can't get out of it now, Nick. I've told ha, everybody. Ha. ha, ha, you're on now. So we also have a couple of other big episodes coming up. Not going to say too much more about it. I already said enough already before. So, obviously, we've got other people coming on. Mm-hmm. Um so look out for those people. We've got a bunch of Australian bakers coming on. We've got a bunch of Canadian bakers coming on too. Yeah, you can find out what that's all about. You can find out what all that's all about indeed. Um, so we've got a very busy schedule coming up. And, of course, we announced for our Canadians, but we haven't really announced for our Australians. We are hosting the first international Virgie Awards where we combine two shows into one. Mm-hmm. And where else would we want to be hosting this event? Hawaii. Ah, hello, Hawaii. So I will be confirming the venue hello, with everybody. Hawaii. I'll be confirming the venue with everybody later on so we can work out ticketing. Yep. Obviously, we want everyone there. We've always had a big crowd. I mean, look, mm. we packed them into the Dapto Workers. We packed them into the Reg- uh, Regina Casino car park, obviously. Um, but this, this year it's going to be more professional. I mean, we've had two years to, to really... We, nut out the... We've got to um, hone our craft. But if, yeah. We, you know, we know what we're doing now. We know to look out for dodgy... Dodgy Dodgy, dodgy, dodgy sponsors. Soft sponsors. We work that out. Yeah. You know, we've worked in blizzard conditions. You know, par- island paradise. I'm looking forward to working in a tropical Me island too. paradise. I mean, it's yeah. going to be fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, I've got a couple of venues sorted. I'm actually going to go and do a spot of flight um, next oh. week. Excellent. I'm brushing up on my Hawaii Five O and my dog, the bounty hunter. That's always um, important. Because, mm, you, know, you know, getting in the locals, I really feel, will be important. You know, arresting someone brutally and then kneeling and praying with them. Yeah, that's the trick. Good. Yep. That's the trick. Yep. So, until Tuesday night. Yeah. Notice how I said Tuesday night. Remember, Nicole, Tuesday <laughs> night. Ask us questions. Hashtag Ask Nick. I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we will catch you all then. Ha <laughs> ha, Nicole. <laughs>